All right, everyone, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Today's video, we're going to be looking at streamers to play Fantasy Hockey Week 22 from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I know a lot of you guys are in the playoffs, got some decent feedback on this video last week, so thought I'd do it again to help you guys kind of push through those matchups and see if you need uh, you pick up anyone on Saturday or Sunday to really um, just enforce that that lead that you have going on. So we're going to look at five players uh, on Sunday's Sunday's matchups. Those guys are... are 15% rostered and a little bit higher. So if you are in a really deep league, unfortunately, there's just not a ton of great matchups or games on Sunday. But Friday and Saturday, I got you guys with guys that are very low rostered, guys that you could plug and play, and that will definitely have some great value to your lineup. So let's get into the video. All right, so the first guy we're going to be looking at on Friday is Washington's matchup against the St. Louis Blues, and that's Trevor Van Riemsdyk. I know I just, if you watch the must-add video, he was in that video. He was 4% rostered then. He's now 10% rostered, so definitely starting to become uh, a little bit more public. Definitely Definitely, people are starting to realize that Washington really has no one on that back end right now. And even last night against Buffalo, Sandine kind of got banged up. He did end up returning to the game, but if he is out against St. Louis, that's just more minutes for Trevor Van, Van Riemsdyk. Um, and he's been utilizing his offensive side more than we've ever really seen it before. Um, and, and like I mentioned, it's mainly because they have a ton of injuries, especially on the back end. So he's playing on that first D pair right now. Uh, he's playing way more minutes than we've seen him play before for Washington, around 24 to 25 minutes. We've seen him got up to 27 minutes too over the last one to two weeks. Um, a great matchup against St. Louis that's allowing a ton of shots. Their goaltending situation is in, sh in shambles right now too. Um, if you're watching this video, the Blues just blew a 3-1 lead. They lost 8-5 to the Minnesota Wild and Jordan Binnington completely lost his head. So that team's definitely in shambles right now. Uh, definitely, they lost their sellers at the deadline and especially on the defensive end, they're just allowing a lot of opportunities and defensemen are getting in on that as well. So over the last five games played too, it's pretty crazy. I know Ovi was out for one of those games, but he leads the team in shots on goal, Corsi for and block shots. Um, he has five points in his last five games as well. So this is definitely a guy that you need to play on St. Louis on Friday. All right, so the first guy that we're going to be looking at on Saturday, less than 2% rostered, yeah, 1% rostered on the New York Islanders. That's Pierre Engvall. He's actually been producing at a pretty decent rate since joining this Islanders team. Um, he's obviously in a much better situation to succeed. I would just say say that just because the forwards on the Islanders obviously not as deep as this Toronto team. Uh, Matt Barzal is also injured as well, so that'll put him up a little bit higher in the lineup. He's playing on that second power play, but the big thing here is the line that he's playing on. Brock Nelson, Kyle Pal Palmieri, and then Pierre Engvall uh, producing at a very high level right now. He has three goals in his last uh, four games and four points as well, adding an assist there. And then Kyle Pal Palmieri just went off against the Ducks. So this line altogether is getting a ton of shots on net. They're scoring a lot of goals. And for an Islanders team that's not really scoring a ton right now, they are the ones that are uh, dictating this offense and the offensive pace. So that's great to see, especially Pierre Engvall, a guy who's utilized in a lot of different situations uh, in five on five. And one good thing, they have a great mass matchup against the San Jose Sharks, who are allowing just a ton of goals right now. We saw this happen uh, maybe a month, month or two ago. Uh, when Capo Kakinen and the rest of their goalies were playing really badly. And now we're seeing that kind of happen again. Sharks are allowing four goals per game in five-on-five -five situations over the last 10 games played. Uh, that's the most in the NHL. So really, if you're starting anyone on the Islanders, it's great. But if you need to start someone that's really, that you need to pick someone up, I think Pierre Engvall is a really sneaky ad for Saturday. All right, so the other guy that we're going to be looking to pick up on Saturday is a plug and play. This is actually the, one of the earlier games in the day. So taking a little bit of risk, but I think it'd be it'd pay off. And it's actually Dennis Mulligan on the Colorado Avalanche. I know that might be surprising, but he is 1% rostered as well right now. Uh, you know, he's playing on Toronto for a good part of the season now on uh, on the Colorado Avalanche. And you're looking at him now just taking advantage of an opportunity. He's on that second line with JT Comfer and Valerie Nechuskin. Uh, Arturi Lekkonen just got hurt, but he had a fantastic game against Montreal. And honestly, Montreal and Detroit right now, I know Detroit's definitely higher in the standings, but they're also kind of sellers at the deadline, moving a lot of uh, important pieces to that team. Uh, so th I think as, as the season comes to an end here, we're going to see them regress uh, a significant amount. They're on the defensive side. Uh, they are allowing a decent amount of op op opportunities. We saw Huso play last game. We've seen Huso and Helberg kind of going back and forth. So if you get Helberg in this game, it'll just be uh, just led red light the entire game. But if Huso plays, a little bit different. But the good thing about Morgan, he is playing in a lot of more situations. If you have the ability to pick up JT Confer, I'd probably suggest that over Morgan because they are playing on the same line and they're still playing close to the, the same minutes that the Ranton and McKinnon line is playing. Uh, just maybe 30 seconds to a minute less if you're looking at the last two games. Confer ha only has one point in his last five games, but his expected goal rate is second on the team over that same span too. So Morgan or Confer, definitely good ads. You can't add Nechuskin. He's like 80 
80% rostered. And honestly, these two guys have been playing a little bit better. So I do uh, prefer JT Confer and Morgan, and definitely a plus matchup when they take on the Detroit Red Wings at 1 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. All right, looking at Sunday now, there's definitely two guys that I'm looking at. The first guy, Pavel Zak on the Boston Bruins. Uh, he's just over 20% rostered right now, so definitely still available in some leagues. This Bruins offense has been a little stale compared to, I guess, the rest of the season, if you're looking at it uh, more recently, but he, he's been playing pretty well. Uh, he's playing on that second line. He has one goal and three points in his last two games play on that second line with Pasta and David Krejci, so obviously you're going to get residuals from there. Pasta is shooting all the time and is scoring at an elite rate the entire season. They go up against Buffalo on Sunday, which has just been a plus matchup for pretty much any fantasy hockey player that you own on your team. Um, and he has great numbers against Buffalo as well. Eight goals and 13 assists in 24 games uh, against Buffalo. So that obviously those are mainly coming when he was playing on New Jersey. But still, those will carry over uh, a team he's very familiar with. Buffalo also allows the fifth most shots on goal per game. They have horrific goaltending and are allowing three and a half goals per game over the last 10 games too. So a team that's definitely, uh, I would say, bad defensively, especially right now, their defensive depth is lacking. And then you have this second line on the Bruins. If, you know, it, Jim Montgomery wants to see other lines other than that first line take some priority and, and take some leadership, I guess, on the offensive end. Uh, and now that they aren't producing, I think this is a perfect time to see Pavel Zaka and even maybe a guy like Trent Frederick step up and score some goals here. So against a Buffalo team that's allowing, allowing a lot of opportunities, has some pretty trash goaltending, I think Zaka is a great spot to play on Sunday. All right, so the last guy we're going to be looking to pick up, a guy that was on my must-add maybe one or two weeks ago, but still less than 15% rostered in Yahoo leagues right now, and that's Anthony Bovillier on the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, they have a really good matchup, obviously, against the Anaheim Ducks on Sunday night. He only has three points in his last five games, but he is second on his team in expected goals. Four over that span, only behind his team or his line mate, excuse me, Andre Kuzmenko. Uh, and you obviously love to see that if you have either one of these guys at this point. Uh, he's much more involved in this offense. I continue to say this in Vancouver than he was in New York. He's on the first line. He's on the first power play, uh, playing the most ice time out of any wingers as well. He's just above uh, Brock Besser and Kuzmenko right now if you're looking at their most recent 10 games and the Ducks are, are just horrible as I mentioned Beauvillier playing on the right wing gives them a slight advantage as well the Ducks especially more recently have been giving up a lot of shots and scoring opportunities to the right winger position but I think um, either him or Kuzmenko is a good play obviously here Beauvillier being a little bit less rostered definitely easier play to, to manage I would say and the Canucks aren't necessarily scoring a lot but it is a lot of the scoring is coming from that first line. Uh, Peterson is centering that first line. So I have I love to see the chemistry that these guys have built so far. And against the Ducks team, we just saw the Islanders decimate them for six on not even a ton of shots. So I think the Canucks can definitely do the same thing on Sunday. And Bovillia will definitely be a part of that score. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully this video helps you advance in the fantasy hockey playoffs. And I'll see you guys next time.